the Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. to the Nikki Clark Show live here at La Creole, 810 St. Clair Avenue West. And how's everybody doing? You're good? Fantastic. Great energy in the room. Yesterday was, was crazy weather, but uh, the weather was frightful. But the people inside here tonight are delightful. And uh, before we get into anything else, let me ask you a question. What time is it? Hot Topics. That's right. It's time for Hot Topics and what Hot Topics are. It's what's trending on social media, what people are talking about at the water cooler. And sitting beside me in the Hot Topics discussion chair is none other than Juice Man, Jonathan Shaw. Please welcome him. How you doing? Very good. How are you? I'm great. And yourself? I'm I'm good. You look a little tired. Is that from uh, digging yourself out of the (laughs) driveway this morning? I shoveled like three times already. (laughs) Are you serious? Where, where are you, in the west or in the east? I'm in Brampton, but, you know, I, I decided to let me go out at 9 o'clock, and then I went out at midnight, then I went out this morning just, you know, just to get up rid of all the snow. Wow. So three times a shoveling. Yeah, the the snowplow guy just loves our street, so he just keeps, I keep shoveling it out, and he keeps putting it back in the driveway. So. Oh, that's annoying. That's very annoying. So tell me, um, what's your take on the Oscars? How many people saw the Oscars on Sunday? Chris Rock was hosting it. And his uh, very controversial monologue. What do you think about that? I watched it on YouTube after. Okay. I didn't watch the Oscars. I said I'm not watching the Os- Why Oscars. Why not? You got seven seconds to lay on this? So. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, there's, there's no reason for me to watch. I mean, there's, there's, there's no, like for the second year in a row, there's no, you know, black person nominated for anything. And I just said, you know, I'm not watching it. Okay. You know, it's, why, why bother waste, you know, three, four hours of of my time watching something that really doesn't appeal to me. I mean, Chris Rock was on it, so, I mean, I could catch his monologue after, and I watched that, and, I mean, there's some jokes that that I thought were good, and there's other stuff where I'm like, "Mm, I don't know. Like, he took took things a little bit too far in some places. Do you think things are changing, though? Um, The the diversity in the Oscars, do you think that's going to be opening up? No. No, not at all. Like... You Say what you really mean. I, I, not at all. No. Not not at all. The re, the the, <laughs> the, re, the reason why is if it were if it were going to open up, then roles and everything else would be open for everybody of color, everybody of any ethnicity, anybody of you know any orientation. Things would have changed a long time ago. I mean, think until we control our own narrative, then it's never going to change. And you can't keep going to the well every single time and asking things to change for people who don't want it to change. I mean, it's been around, as Chris Rock said, it's been around for 88 years. I mean, there's been, what, five, six, seven, you know, black people who've actually won uh, best, you know, um, an Oscar? Yeah. Of any category? I mean, okay, let me, let me go off my head, okay. <laughs> Sidney Poitier. <laughs> um, Jamie Foxx. Halle Berry got one. Halle Berry got one. Um, lady oh. back in the 1940s got one. Uh, for oh, Gone with Butterfly the Wind. Butterfly McQueen, I think she got it for, uh, what's that name? The, uh, I have Gone not. with the Wind. She yes, got it yes. Um, I think her ago. name was uh, Hattie, Hattie? Ma- Hattie. I can't remember her last okay. name. It escapes me. Mc- McDaniel. Okay. And uh, I said Louis Gossett Jr. Mm-hmm. won one. Um, Cuba Gooden Jr. won one as well. But I mean. Just a handful in 88 years, and I'm like... And Will Smith didn't even get a category. <laughs> Not at all. Not, Not at, at all. all. But I mean, I'm just saying, and it, Creed was a great movie as well, too, and, and no supporting actor for that. Um, straight out of Compton, great movie, nothing for that. I, I mean, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Okay. All right, so let's talk about Super Tuesday. How many people are following what's going on with the Donald? Well, people who want to leave the United States of America... The number one Google search was to leave how to get to Canada. (laughs) Went up a thousand percent. Uh, On the weekend, myself and Dr. Vibe, uh, we interviewed a gentleman by the name of uh, Henri. Mm -hmm. And he said he's learning the Canadian national anthem just in case Donald wins. (laughs) So. uh, (laughs) Not the Nelly Furtado version. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) You went there. You went there. I didn't go there. Sorry, my bad. 
Donald, or the Donald, as I like to call him, is a character, caricature of himself. Mm -hmm. The whole... The roadkill hair. The whole Trump branding mm -hmm. is a brand. And people are buying into the brand. They believe that, the, that Donald Trump, or, or just Trump in, in general, it's about power, it's about money, it's about success. They don't look at his failures. They don't look at the fact that he tried to do um, a football league and it failed. He's at other failing ventures, uh, different things that he's he done. He went bankrupt, didn't he? Several times. Yeah. But, but again, it's a, it's a business move. So this is who you want to run the country. I mean, he, he has said a lot of things and then contradicted himself before. And, and, and I mean, you have... Like anything that the KKK endorses, I'm not trying to hear that. Mm -hmm. But or it building a wall in Mexico. What's up with that? I and telling Mexicans, oh, by the way, you're going to foot the bill. <laughs> Adios. Again, you, again, everything that he does, like, like I've, I've asked the same question. When is the joke going to be over now? Yeah. Like when is, is everybody going to say, hey, you're on punk or, you know, hey, you're on candid camera, <laughs> but he seems to keep, you know, going further and Building further momentum. and further. Yeah. And people are like, well, hey, you know, I like that Donald Trump guy. That Donald Trump guy is a real good guy. I'm going to vote for him. I'm like, no, <laughs> not trying to. Hear. This can't be happening. Yeah. Not at all. No. All right. Well, so it go. And uh, <laughs> we'll keep following <laughs> the saga on CNN and all the other American channels. But we've got a really fantastic show. Uh, tonight, so you don't want to go anywhere. We're here at the Nikki Clark Show. Uh, myself, Juice Man, so you don't want to go anywhere. La Creole, come right back. Thank you. <laughs>to the Nikki Clark show and I'm very excited to introduce a great friend of mine we've known each other for many years and he's the type of man who brings the vibe wherever he goes <laughs> so please welcome radio personality Dr. Vibe to the show <laughs> how you doing I am blessed highly favored a magnet for miracles and a solution for someone's problem and you ditto <laughs> <laughs> what's up What's up? Well, uh, what's up with you? Congratulations on all your success and all the mega awards you've been receiving. Well deserved. Well, well, thank you, but it, I didn't do it by myself. And uh, it's people like yourself, Jonathan, and others who uh, keep me going. And I hope that I can keep you going too. Absolutely, thank you do you. inspire me. Thank so you. tell me a little bit about your background, because I know you, but. Uh, how about the audience? Jeez, how far you want to go back? When I had hair, or you <laughs> know, like, uh, okay. Basically, right now, I've grown up most of my life in Scarborough. Still live in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. and uh, Scarborough. Started Scarborough. No, I like Scarborough. Okay. Scarborough. And uh, started my own online show almost nine years ago. First conversation I had online was about Michael Vick and the dogs. Mm. At my dining room table. Okay. And a thousand conversations later, all recorded. I'm now doing stuff for not only my own site, but a site called The Good Men Project, which is one of the most viewed sites in the world for men. They get uh, 3 million visitors a month and 5 million Fantastic. paid views a month and uh, hosting a number of different shows. Okay. So describe your show then and uh, who's your audience? Well, that's a great question, Nikki, because originally it was for black Canadian men and those who love them. Then it became for black men and those who love them. And now it's becoming for men and those who love them, and then I do shows outside of that. Okay. So it, the audience, when it started to where it is now, is just growing, and I also host a weekly women's show. You do? Yeah, awesome. absolutely. I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, I, I, I always have the next. Memo. I'm always keeping the next going, okay. right? Just so like you. I absolutely. Always have to keep, keep it, going. it going. Absolutely. So what type of topics do you cover? That's a great question. A lot of times, uh, as you know, being a conversationalist, we listen to what people say. Yeah. Active listening. Active listening. And what was that? Active listening. <laughs> and I listen to what people say, and they become topics. So very rarely when I'm on a show, I, only, I don't even do shows. I call them conversations. Okay. Because when people hear show, they think formal, this. I believe in conversations. Right. Because when people are respected in a conversation, they'll give you more, mm -hmm. and they'll be more truthful. So 
up to last night we had a topic about men, what are you doing to make yourselves better? And then after the show, another topic came up, how do men get over grief, losing a loved one? Okay. So that's our next week's subject, and that came from the conversation after. All right, so um, from that conversation, did you learn that men grieve differently from women, and does it take them a longer time to grieve? I think a lot of people don't realize that men do grieve, but they just don't show it. Okay. Okay. And a lot, and that's a whole I, other well, conversation. I think they've been socialized that you know boys yeah. don't cry, right? Exactly, but okay. boys don't cry. A lot of men don't cry. Okay. Because they've been taught by either their father or by society or media not to show their emotions in that way. Right. Right. Okay. What was the most challenging show for you? The first time I had to sit down with someone who I didn't know. Okay. And it was a short story. It was a gentleman that I was introduced to who lives in Mimico, which is western part of Toronto. And it was amazing. He was about 60 years old, grew up in Toronto. In the early days of the 50s, he had a black mother and an Italian father. Okay. And he shared his life with me. And I asked him about his mother, and he began to cry. Oh, wow. And I've never forgotten that moment. But it's not hard for me now because I believe in conversation. And I say to all my guests, I call them my friends, it's your show. I steer the ship. You just facilitate. That's it. It's okay. their show. I, I give them the empowerment to feel comfortable, to give their best. Mm -hmm. And as I say to my friends, after you're finished, I want you to be tired because you got everything out you want. Mm. Yeah, like a good therapy session. If you Hence, call it that. Dr. Vibe. Dr. Vibe. But I'm not a real doctor, by the way. <laughs> just plays one on TV. There you go. What's up? <laughs> so what's next for you? Well, the next venture that's up for me right now is I've just been named uh, a brand ambassador for wow. uh, the only African-American magazine that's dedicated to food, wine, and culture called Cuisine Noir. Cuisine Noir. Cuisine Noir magazine that's actually available in Toronto okay. at to some bookstores. Uh, that's one of the things that's next. Also, I'm going to be speaking at a conference or sharing at a conference in San Francisco in September. Very nice. And I've just been asked to speak or share. I don't speak. I share at a Rites of Passage conference coming into York University in June. Okay. That's fantastic. Thank I'm very, very proud of you. Right back at you. Thank you for all your support and blessings to all you've done yeah. and will continue to do. And most importantly, be a great mother. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Absolutely. And tell us, where can people find you? If you want to find me, you can go to my website, the, D-R, V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W dot com. You can email me at D-R period, V-I-B-E, at the, D-R, V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W dot com. And I'm also available on Twitter at D-R, V-I-B-E, S-H-O-W, Dr. Vibe Show. And I'm going to throw something out there. If anyone wants to chat with me, I'll give you 30 minutes and we can have a good session because we've had some fun out here in the audience tonight. And I'm more than happy to, to listen and do what I can. So there's my offer. Awesome. Dr. Vibe, everybody. Thank you so much. The best. Thank you so yeah. much. We'll be right back. <laughs>
I made who I am today with the grace of God, of course. Mm -hmm. So with the name, I just thought I could do something really fun with it. And that's how the boutique came about. Okay. Yeah. And I like that. So yeah. the ton is the 10. You the put ten. a 10 in there. Yes, Karen Carrington, because all the items in the boutique are $10. And uh, everything, absolutely everything. That's brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that. So where do, they, uh, where do you get the clothing? From my closet. And honestly, my um, wardrobe is a store. And um, I just felt like giving back. I mean, everywhere I go or I connect with somebody, they ask me, where did you get that? Where did you get that? And I do a lot of thrift shopping. Okay. And I'm a, on a tight budget being a single mother. And I think we How many children do you have? One son's 21, and the other one is turning 12. And he's here. Make yes. some noise. What's his name? Therese. Hey, yeah. Therese. Yeah. He's proud of mommy. He's my business partner, actually. We go everywhere wow. together. Excellent. Vegas, LA. We travel together to get a lot of these items as well. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 He's my helper. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, the boutique evolved in uh, how much time? Is it, uh, it's fairly new. Yeah. I put it together in about six weeks. And it wasn't hard to put together because it comes from within. Mm-hmm. The beauty that I wanted to add to the boutique really just came from my inner soul. It wasn't hard to put together because it was all the rebuilding I did after the divorce. Okay. I put all that emotion and energy mm -hmm. into the boutique and that's what makes it fun, that's what makes it lively, that's what makes it fresh because it emulates how I feel. Okay, it yeah. is you. It is so I me. Right? I see the hot pink and what? I think Karen Carrington. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the pieces. Yeah, sure. So like I said, everything's $10. Okay. And the reason Look at why these shoes. Huh? Hello. 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 Talking to me. Size nine. Size nine, right there. And the reason why I chose $10 is because women on a hustle, Ooh. you don't want to you don't want to think of numbers. Put these you closer just to me. Know when you go in your wallet, you yes. want to know what you're spending. So I even have name brand Michael Kors. You too. Yes. Uh, yes. Michael Kors right here. And honestly, um, someone had asked me, you know, am I going to lose selling everything for $10? But I'm not, because there's women out there who want to feel fashionable, they want to feel fabulous, and they just don't have the budget for it. Mm -hmm. So if I could help them in any way, you know, just give a piece of me and give a piece of my clothing, I'm more than happy to do that, if that, it blesses others, right? That is amazing. It really is. And, and I, I'm a big clothes horse so I'm always buying and buying um, and it's also great to give away too because sometimes it's, it's just it's, you just have too much in your cupboard it's very it's like a detox for me it is a detox I feel like I'm just cleansing and blessing someone else and instead of saying you know where did you get that oh girl this whole thing I'm like oh girl have it have it, have it. Right. Okay, so yeah. what if we have some people in the audience, in, including myself, who want to give some stuff away? Because I'm in like overflow in my yeah. cupboard. I'm always welcome to donations. And um, if you do donate, um, some of the proceeds go back to a project that I'm working with. Yeah. Uh, women in a shelter that are um, integrating back into work or trying to get back into society. Um, I use some of the proceeds to give back to them so that when they are ready to shop and rebuild their life similar to like I did, they have somewhere they can come. So the proceeds go to that. I think that's beautiful. Can you give a round of applause for that? That is very, very charitable. Thank um, you. So what makes it unique? I think what makes it unique is everything's just, my motto is be fab, be frugal. Meaning everything's just absolutely fabulous. Everything yeah. is $10. Everything, I have all different sizes to fit every type of woman. And what makes it unique is I have... Fits everybody. It fits everybody. And I, I package everything in these bags that smell like Ooh. pink roses. Smell that bag. Oh, come on. <laughs> it really does smell like roses. <laughs> Pass it around. It really does. Because packaging is important. Yeah. You, you know? You've been very, very thorough about your branding. I can see that. I thought very consistent. everything through. If yeah. I can make another woman happy, um, my job is done. And you're making a man happy because uh, if his woman's happy, he's and happy. And then he's happy. Yes. And she's happy on $10 on his visa. <laughs> right. And so yeah. Oh, that's like a Tina Turner kind of. Right. Fresh to death. 
tags. And the tags are still on it. So it's like tags are on it's brand like new. Use items, but tags are on the majority of them. So why are you holding back that one? I'm buying oh, that one. Sorry, sorry, okay. Sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> this. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? So there's the faux fur, mm -hmm. and then there's the pink blazer. So not everything's pink, but I thought for today, I am having a one-day event, actually. Um, everything's online, and things have been going off the shelf. So I am having a one-day event on March 19th. Nice. It's a pop-up shop. Okay. It's down on Baldwin Street in 25 Baldwin, and everyone can come visit. 25 Baldwin. 25 what Baldwin time? From 12 to 7. 12 to 7. You got that? Yeah, okay. and everything will be there, and you can just raid the whole place. Okay. Do you see yourself expanding for men or children? Oh, geez. I've been asked. Yeah. I'm going to stick with women for now. For now. I want to give back to women. Okay. And I, I'll think in the future, but right now it's all about the ladies. Yeah. Well, I love what you're doing. Thank you. And it's, uh, you know, congratulations Thank with that. You. And I, I also know that you've got something else very special coming up in the summertime. I do. Uh, a book project coming up uh, with you. Thank you. I'm so honored to do that project with you. Thank you. It's uh, an anthology where um, we're writing chapters of transforming, you know, lives and thinking of a time when you just had to rebuild and start again. And I can't wait to just share that with the world so yeah. it could heal somebody else. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. And, and I'm really, um, I'm honored to, you know, have you co-author in this book because, uh, as you said, when you um, release that story, it's really cathartic. It and, and not only is it healing for yourself, but like, like you said, it could heal someone else. It does. So yeah, it's it it's does. thirty stories of uh, powerful um, transitions and uh, transformations. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really excited, excited about me it too. too. Thank you for yeah. having me on. Today. So tell me again uh, and tell us again how we can uh, shop for some great clothing online and and know more about you. You could visit me on my website, which is www.karencarrington.com. Uh, you could find me on Instagram, which is the Karen Carrington Show and all about me. And you can find me on my Facebook page, which is um, at Karen Carrington Boutique. And it's the number 10. Yes. Okay. Karen, very proud of you. Thank you. Karen Carrington, everyone. Make some noise for her. <laughs> we'll be back. Welcome back uh, to the Nikki Clark Show live and sitting beside me is a wonderful woman. Uh, she is the Trade and Investment Commissioner for Dominica in Canada. Please welcome Fran Del Sol to the show. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. You look lovely. I like this uh, pink that you're wearing. Soft pink. Yes. <laughs> so we met each other, I think maybe two, three years ago at a pageant. Can you tell us about that? It was the Madame Wobdouillette. Yes. 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 Dominica, the Wobdouillette is the cultural wear for Dominica. It's the traditional wear right. for the island of Dominica. Yes. And it is a, a, a dress that has been handed down from our free slave grandmothers okay. and great grandmothers. And so as Dominicans and St. Lucians as well, we continue to uphold that culture. Okay, let's do a test. How many uh, Dominicans, St. Lucians in the house? Make some noise. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, a couple of them. <laughs> um, so let me say, uh, Sacafet. Ah! C'est bien, c'est bien. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your background leading up to this prestigious position that you have. Well, I, I'm the child of a, of a policeman as a father and a school principal as a mother. And we, I grew up in the island of Dominica. And uh, I learned community from my parents. My mother was a community advocate and the UNICEF coordinator for Dominica for the southern part of the island. So in, in, in traveling to Canada, where I've lived for the last 40 years, I've just transitioned into being a community advocate and a community activist. Mm -hmm. and doing things to uphold and uplift our community. Okay, wonderful. And you've been uh, traveling quite a bit to Dominica. Since the, since the, um, I've, I've always gone back to Dominica. I call Dominica home. Yes. I say home is where the heart is. Absolutely. And my heart is, has always been in Dominica, regardless of the fact that I've lived here for 40 years. Yes. So I go back once or twice every year, but have gone back since the, since the tropical storm that devastated Dominica. 
So I, I, I need, there, there is more for a need to go back to make sure that we keep abreast of what is happening and advise our diaspora people up in Canada and the rest of the world. Okay, can you take us back to uh, when that happened? Uh, that was in the summer? That was August 27th of uh, last year. Okay. And uh, Dominica was battered with rain for about 12 hours that we had never seen in the history right. of the island. And as a result, it suffered about $1.3 billion in damages. In damage. Infrastructure, um, agriculture, social, housing, everything was damaged. Okay. And, and how are things um, going on right now? How are the people uh, managing, recovering? The island, the island is rebounding. And you know, Nikki, we as people of African descent, we're resilient. Yes. And we will survive regardless of the, of the consequences or, the, or, or what we are under. So Dominica is no different. Mm -hmm. That does not mean, however, that the island does not need help. Yes. A lot of progress has taken place. Our, our seaports and our um, airports are open. And we're open again to tourism. And, uh, and Dominica is rebounding. But $1.5 billion in damages yes. is not going to be something that we, we recover from in a matter of months. It yes. has only been months. Right. And the prime minister, to quote him, said it'll take 20 years. Wow. So we need to, as a, as a people of this universe, as a people of this world, to come together and help those that are less fortunate. And hopefully, in so doing, we'll help Dominica not rebuild in 20 years, but probably in 10 or even five would be great. Okay. Uh, what I would love to see, uh, short-term growth, uh, so, you know, less than 20 years. And, and I, I'm sure people uh, out there watching would like to help you. So how can they do that? We're accepting contributions at the Bank of Montreal. And it is, uh, sorry, the Bank of Montreal, Dominica Association Emergency Fund. Transit number is 28924. And the account number is 8330256. And that information you will see again later below the screen. Oh, thank you. So what drives your passion to help people? It it's, takes a very special person to do this. It's, it's knowing that we still have so much to do. It, it, I, was, I was speaking to one of the guests earlier. It's about us as a community coming together and working on, on so, so much that still needs to be done. Yes. And, and it's about encouraging us as a community to put our differences aside. And it's not about a Caribbean community. It's not about a black community. Right. It's about an African community in Canada coming together. Our failure to do that will be our demise. And so I will leave every breath I've got in encouraging my community to come together and build us as a community so we can make a difference, so we can be involved. We can be in the war room where they make decisions that affect us, so we can get involved in the political process. That's what drives me. I want to see us move forward. I just think we've been here too long, and we haven't gone as far as we should be at this time. OK, fantastic. Please put your hands together for that. Very wise words. Thank you so much. Fran, very, uh, very happy to help you in any way I can. Uh, you have my full support, and I want to thank you again for being here on the Nikki thank Clark you. Show. It's Del, a pleasure. Fran Del Sol, everyone. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Show. And sitting beside me is the founder of the International Woman Achievers Awards. Please welcome Princess Boucher to the show. Thanks for having me here, Nikki. Oh my, I'm, I'm very happy to have you here. And you look wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I like my your, best. Oh, look at your styling. I like that. Uh, so we've known each other for a while now. And I, I think I was one of those people that uh, you were throwing the idea around uh, the uh, conception of the show. And, and uh, I was teaching at Sheridan College uh, back in the day. And you yes. came into the classroom. We were teaching. Um, the class was uh, community development. Absolutely. And you talked about this award show. Yes. And look where you are now. And look where we are today. That's yes. fantastic. Show, yes. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your background uh, leading up to creating this award show and why. Oh my goodness, I don't know where to start, but it's, there's so much uh, things surrounding um, the reason why I do this. But the, one of the most important thing is that um, working with youth within my communi community, and um, you know, I work with a lot of young women who um, 
and, and where I see they were going with their lives is that they, they have given up and they, they feel that um, uh, because they may um, gotten themselves into trouble, they have children, or and they feel that that was it for them. Yeah, life's over. I, I, absolutely. And I figure, how can, how can I figure out a way to em, uh, empower and then to enlighten these women and uh, to show them that it doesn't stop here? And with my life coming, you know, I'm a mother of seven, a single mother of seven children, and you know, having to grow these children on my own. And, and not only that, um, I myself have, um, have obstacles in my life where I have um, been incarcerated, and, and I did not let that stop me from wanting to, to move forward and to, 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 to make, um, take the negative and make positive of it. And so I feel that the best way to do that, and I look at other women as well who are, who are doing so much within their communities, mm -hmm. giving back and contributing and giving of themselves. And what better way to acknowledge these women and at the same time empower young women that they too can achieve their goals and it doesn't stop um, in spite of the obstacles that they have to, 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 um, to, to um, in, uh, meet. Or it doesn't stop. Yeah. You know, they just have to fight and, and move forward with, with whatever it is. And you know what I'm saying? That's Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the award show, show was born how long ago? And this happened uh, in 2009. 2009. And the idea comes along. I did the first one in 2010. And um, it's been uh, six years now. Okay. So last, well, six years. But last year didn't happen because um, um, for most people um, know that I've, I was, um, I fell ill. I was diagnosed with cancer. And so I had to um, postpone the show. And, but here we are because, again, I will not let that stop me. Fantastic. You know? I really got to give it up for Princess. You, you have such um, fortitude of will, and uh, it's really a shining example for uh, so many people, myself and, and younger women. So we have the award show coming up this Saturday, March 5th. And I'm looking at uh, the flyer here, and I got to say, you got some really good looking hosts. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. This looks just like you. Oh, it is me. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> toot toot. So. And then who else is uh, on the... And so we do have yourself alongside Michelle Morgan. And for most of you, Michelle Morgan is Hillary Curtis from Young and the Restless. Young and Restless, y'all. Young and the Restless. <laughs> That's so, no joke. You know, we want to come out and celebrate and, and honor these women. And I, we, I'm, I'm like, we are growing each and every year. Now I have calls that are coming in from from India, from, from um, Nigeria, and, and this year we're honoring women from Nigeria and from India and from um, Uganda. And, and, and so, you know, this is what it's all about, International Women Achievers Awards. So it's not just to on, honor women from within the local, in, locally, but around the globe. And so each year, again, we, do, we uh, have um, a theme that uh, focuses on issues of women. And so this year, we're focusing on global awareness, the positive right. body image. And yes, that's yes. important. So, and yeah. we're donating again to the um, Plan Canada because I'm a girl. And so we want everyone to come out and just support this initiative and celebrate women and celebrate yourself as a woman. And gentlemen, you are included. Celebrate your woman. Celebrate your woman. <laughs> and then, uh, yes, absolutely. And then Women's Day, isn't that coming up? That's March 8th. And yes, yeah. absolutely, yes. Okay. So tell us, how can people purchase tickets? Where can we go to watch this uh, fantastic so this, event? This will be happening at the Jamaican Canadian Association, and that will be at 995 Our Road. And you can purchase tickets online, iwaawards.net.com. Uh, you could call me at 647-618-8596. So again, 647-618-8596. Okay. And, and can you mention the uh, website one more time? International Women Achievers Award. So IWAawards.net. Okay. I'm so excited. What are you wearing? Do you know? Who are you wearing? Drop dead. <laughs> Ooh, can't wait, can't wait. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Princess. It's been a pleasure. Princess Boucher, everybody. You got to come out on Saturday to support this great, great event. We'll be right back.
right. Uh, welcome back to the Nikki Clark Show. And uh, sitting beside me is uh, the founder of Light It Up Candles and Body and Spa. Please welcome Valerie Augustine to the show. <laughs> yeah, it smells so good in here. It's ambrosial. The minute Thank you walked you. in, I was like, oh, <laughs> smells really good. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you get into this amazing company that you started? Well, first of all, Nikki, thank you so much for having me on your show. It's so exciting. Oh, and, my pleasure. Um, I started actually as a hobby. I saw a lady on the shopping channel making candles, and I thought that was kind of neat. At the yeah. time, I was uh, doing personalized wedding invitations, and I thought it was something that I would add to the things that I do. And I did a friend's wedding. I did some candles. And it was just turned into word of mouth from there. Somebody at the wedding liked it. And I went on to do uh, christenings and birthday parties and trade shows. And it just kind of blossomed. It just there. caught on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And how long has it been now? It's been over 10 years, about 12, 13 years that I've been doing uh, the candles. And then I eventually uh, started to do soaps. I added body butter and uh, incense and oils to uh, the line. Okay. So. Now, your background is in chemistry, is that right? Um, no, I don't have a chemistry background. Um, I did something totally different in school, <laughs> and uh, it just kind of, by doing the hobby and uh, doing more research and working with other people who worked in labs and who were in the business, I learned and uh, made the craft for my own. Okay. Yeah. So these are made by you? They're all made by me. Okay. I use a lot of uh, natural products, and that was the thing that uh, I think really drew me to making uh, products because a lot of the stuff on the shelves, you couldn't read what the labels mm -hmm. were. Yeah. So I, use, I tend to use a lot of shea butter. I use a lot of cocoa butter, uh, sea salts, and olive oils in, in the products. Okay. All right. And, and what kind of... Uh, a uh, sense do you have uh, that you've infused in your great products? Well, I actually have over 300 scents in my uh, inventory, but the most popular scents are the lavenders, the vanillas, yeah. and because they the have, calming ones. Um, yeah, and mm -hmm. they have uh, beneficial properties. The lavender is very calming and relaxing, and a uh, scent like grapefruit is uplifting and energizing. So it depends on people's moods, uh, what they like, and I like to kind of play with different scents, so I like to mix you know, maybe lavender with grapefruit or, you know, do different things that you don't see in your typical uh, store. Okay, so you've got candles yes. and then um, explain the body and the spa part. What are the, uh, what are the products that you have for so that? So the body and the spa uh, products, they start with like a whipped body butters. So I have about 13 different fragrances in the whipped body butters. And those are a combination of shea butter, cocoa butter, vitamin E, Japanese green tea. Uh, I also have hair and body oils, castor oil, nutmeg oil, which I import the nutmeg from Grenada. The shea butter we do import from uh, Africa. And uh, we also have a line of natural soaps and um, sea salts, body scrubs. It just goes on and on. Okay. <laughs> yes. So your massage oils must have been really, you know, oh, yeah. like coming off the shelf for Valentine's Especially Day. Especially for Valentine's yeah. Day. And every Valentine's Day we do... Uh, lickable massage oil, and we also do a massage oil that's in the uh, shape of a candle, but once you light it, you can massage your uh, body with it, Ooh. so that was very exciting. For you have that here? Day. I'm just Not saying. today. <laughs> <laughs> like, it definitely uh, hooked you up. So. <laughs> All right, you know people. <laughs> well, I, you answered my question. It's a Canadian-made product, it so is. that is fantastic. Is. And uh, let me ask you about some of the people in your circle. Right. Um, your mother yes. is, uh, is a fantastic woman. Um, how, has, how has she pushed you in this company? Um, she's been very uh, instrumental. She's been very supportive. And um, anybody who knows her knows that... Uh, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, Jean Augustine. She, uh, <laughs> so she was Honorable very, Jean Augustine. Yes. yes. So she was very um, supportive and unconditionally supportive in uh, my effort and always saying, girl, you can do it, you know, you could reach higher, make that phone call, and <laughs> always gave me the support that um, I needed uh, to have the type of business. Okay, your mom is your major influence. Oh, yes, for sure. For okay, sure. so um, you're a mother. Yes. And how many children do you have? I have two boys. Okay. And uh, they're actually quite active in the business as well. I see them everywhere you go. <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah. They are. They are. I have uh, brought them to trade shows. Um, my older son, he's 12. And I think he can probably tell you about every product. And they help me 
even put the wicks in the molds and I try to incorporate um, them in what I do in the business and um, also to encourage them to have an entrepreneurial spirit as well. Do you see that budding in them? Do you I see do. it emerging? I do. Today yeah. he wanted to go out and knock on the neighbor's doors to shovel snow. I'm <laughs> like, okay, relax. <laughs> Uh, what's but, the going rate to <laughs> shovel someone's driveway? It was 25 cents back yeah, in my I think day. Yeah, it's about 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Inflation. <laughs> Not a bad part-time right, exactly, gig. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Tell me something. Have you found any um, challenges or any obstacles um, along your way as a black female entrepreneur? Um, for me, not so much. Um, I try to just focus on the business and what I do and try to educate people as I go along. Um, one of the big things I like to do within the company is bring on other people to help um, them also uh, become an entrepreneur as well. So I do have sales reps and they go out and they knock on local businesses and you know we try to have house um, home parties and get the name out there. So it also gives other women the the opportunity to also uh, have a small business of their own. Okay. And um, I also teach uh, at the Jean Augustine Center. To, uh, Where is that? It's uh, located in South Etobicoke, rural mm -hmm. York and Evans. And I teach candle and soap making pro uh, classes. So to That's young amazing. girls between uh, 14 and 20 years old. And it's really exciting because you also see the entrepreneurial spirit within them. It might not be candles or soap, but it could give them kind of an idea to do whatever their passion is. But it's really... But it, it lights their fire, it lights it fire for, for sure. entrepreneurship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And the fact that we start off with basically nothing, raw materials, and they by the end of the class, they go home with something that they made that they could use. Yeah. So a lot of pride and a accomplishment. Lot of pride and, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, I see some lighted up uh, T-shirts in here. Can you want to give a little shout out to the people who came yes. to support you? <laughs> Special shout out to uh, Sophia and uh, Veronica is here as well. She's one of our sales reps here and uh, she deals with the Mississauga Brampton area and Sharon also is here as well and she's also uh, helping get the name out there and host the uh, candle parties and home parties as well okay yeah. fantastic now where can people find you so we could find me online at uh, www.lovelightedup.com and light is l-i-t-e so www.lovelightedup.com uh, you could also find me on Facebook at Light It Up Candles, Body, and Spa. Okay. And uh, any words of advice to someone who's thinking about starting their own business, but um, words of encouragement would you give them? Um, I would say to, firstly, do something that you love because it makes a difference. You spend a, a lot more time than you probably would at a 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that passion and do something that you really are passionate about. And... Um, you just got to keep on going and don't don't take no for an answer. It's it's uh, it's rewarding. Yeah. But it is a lot of work. But it is sure. rewarding. You have to persevere. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Appreciate and I brought it. a little something all for me. Love gifts. Thank you. Make some noise. Ah, oh, thank you. And I didn't forget the juice man. I have a little <laughs> thing in there for you as well. Yeah, he was frowning. No, nope, you got your bag. There you go. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Uh, Valerie, thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate you, and uh, keep you. up the great work. Thank you. Valerie Augustine, everyone. We'll be back. <laughs>